Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. Now that my two obligatory informative videos are done for the day, it's time to talk about current events in the online fitness world. Uh, we got some pretty bad news this morning about Dallas McCarver uh, passing away, so let me put on my plus five out of weaponsmithing. I work on skill up my crafting a little bit, and let's talk about this. Now, I kind of stated on Facebook uh, that, yeah, I'd talk about this later. I was going to get my other stuff out of the way. Um, I wasn't going to be that nice about this one. Um, you know, I'm kind of tired of with all this crazy bodybuilding stuff I happen to do the rest in peace and all that. Do we really need to go there? Uh, and the reason I'm going to say that, and I don't mean to upset fans, I don't mean to upset any of this guy's family or people who loved him who watched this video. That's not my intention. But the point is, at a certain point, it's time for a wake-up call in this whole community, in this whole online fitness world, fitness uh, and people following bodybuilding at this is a death cult. It is a chosen, deadly, dangerous, body-destroying lifestyle. All right, and we're going to see more and more of these guys drop dead. And me saying that, and saying at this point, I don't even know if the rest in pieces are in order anymore, uh, doesn't matter if it upsets some of the person's fans, because you know what? If one person sees any of these videos talking about these guys dying, and they understand that this lifestyle will kill you, they understand that this lifestyle will kill you and it saves one person's life. It doesn't matter if it offends a thousand people. What's more important to you? Not offending people or saving people's lives. I'm going to go out on a limb and say I wouldn't give a single shit if I offended a hundred thousand people if it saved someone's life, a young, naive, impressionable uh, young man. If it saved their life, isn't that worth it? I'm going to say yeah. And let's be honest about this. I'm going to go into what the reported stories are about his death, but what you guys need to understand, that can absolutely be tied back to this lifestyle, even assuming the reports are true, and I'm going to break down why. But what you also need to remember is there's always a PR machine in place. Now, for all we know, all we have are what people who cared him, knew him, loved him have said so far. We don't have coroner's reports. Um... People have already been caught with these bodybuilding related things lying to, to save face of people they care about. Look how many people jumped up and said, oh, the Rich Piana thing didn't involve any street drugs when the police actually said they found cocaine right there. He had been snorting coke. And that was in the reports. It was cocaine. Well, that's a drug. But again, to save face, PR purposes, people will say that. We don't know what was really found at this scene. We're going to take their word. Uh, we don't know the guy didn't die like David Carradine did, and they don't want to embarrass the poor guy. You know, it's kind of like, man, please go delete my uh, my porn folder if, if I die. You know, your friends will do that for you, right? It's exactly the case. We don't really know, but I'm going to go out on a limb and assume, I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that they're telling the truth at this point until it's proven otherwise. Uh, and what you guys need to understand this is totally lifestyle related. Uh, they're saying they found him possibly choked. He was dead in an apartment with food in his mouth and throat. So they were assuming he choked to death. Well, that's not the coroner's report. Now, here's a couple things to stop and think about. Let's look at the different possibilities of this. We have a guy who's over 300 pounds. When you hear about someone choking to death, half the time it's usually someone who's morbidly obese. For a couple of reasons. Number one, the volumes of food they eat. Number two, breathing restriction. Now, this is a person who carries a body weight that's going to restrict his airways, who uses drugs that will cause inflammation or restriction of airways. This isn't subject to debate. All right, this guy clearly uses a bunch of trimbalone and high doses of any anabolic. Very high doses of any anabolic, particularly trend, are documented and noted to cause restriction and inflammation of your airways. In other words, you can choke easier. Most of these guys are on sleep apnea, they're like they're on breathing machines because they have sleep apnea. All right, They have the same sleep apnea morbidly obese fat people who are 150 pounds overweight have. That goes hand in hand with being a bodybuilder, a heavyweight power lifter, a strong man, all that stuff. They almost all have sleep apnea and most of them need to be on breathing machines. Why? Because they have problems with their airways and breathing. They are no different in many regards and many health risks to being a 300 pound fat ass. There's not a lot of difference in terms of health. I dare anyone to argue otherwise. Uh, and here's the scary thing. What do I know about this guy? I know his name is Dallas McCarver. I know that I did another video when this same kid, uh, and he is a kid. He's in his 20s. All right, that's a kid to me. 
no offense to anyone, but that, that's a kid. Uh, the same kid almost died at a bodybuilding show. And I had looked at what he was doing, the fact that he went pro so fast, because that's when I knew that he was the youngest person to turn pro, and said, you know, this guy's going to die. This guy's not going to make it. This guy's killing himself already this young. And here we have him uh, passed away. So we've got a possibility there of the choking, but what else is going on? They said he's prone to passing out. Why is he prone to passing out? I don't know, because he abuses massive amounts of drugs and he's 300 plus pounds. That's why he passes out. I mean, it should be some common sense here, people. I don't know, I use eight different drugs at 20 plus, 20 times or more the therapeutic dose, uh, and I'm over 300 pounds. I pass out every now and then. Also, definitely the size he's at, Definitely he's going to abuse insulin. Impossible to get there with just anabolics. I dare anyone to argue otherwise who knows about these drugs. This guy abuses insulin probably. How do we know he didn't pin a bunch of insulin, go hypoglycemic in the middle of his eating, and choke on his food because he blacked out from the insulin? You know what? That's a very real possibility. In fact, I'd go out on a limb and say I almost bet that's going to be in the coroner's report as a possibility. Have he pinned a bunch of insulin? How many big, massive pro bodybuilders pen insulin before their every meal? They'll drink, get some quick carbs and protein in and they eat food. How common is that? I do that five or six times a day. I don't know. I see it all the time. When you see uh, bodybuilders in the past who put up their logs or insulin logs, that's pretty common. It's a common procedure. He could have gone hypo in the middle of eating. And that's why he had food stuck in his mouth and throat. He could have passed out or his other problem that causes him to pass out. But the point is, some people already say, well, if it's choking, that could happen to anyone. Yeah, because uh, having restricted airways, being 300 plus pounds, abusing drugs, having a problem that makes you pass out, and using drugs that can make you pass out and go hypoglycemia if it didn't contribute. You're telling me that if he didn't do all that stuff, that he would have still choked to death today? And a lot of people say, well, you know, we everything we do has risk. Yeah, but there's risk and then there's risk. I mean, let's be honest, this lifestyle, anyone who gets involved in this lifestyle has a death wish. Nobody who loves themselves, truly loves themselves and wants to live would ever get involved in this crazy ass hardcore bodybuilding scene. It's a suicide cult, it's a death cult. And you know, and people are gonna stand there and be like, well, I respect him, I admired him, why? Because he joined a group of people who destroy their bodies. Bodybuildings turned into body destruction. Pumped as many drugs into his body as he could. I mean, that's like saying, well, I, I really respect these guys over here because they get in a crack smoking contest. And this guy actually can smoke way more crack than anyone else before he, he blacks out. And he does it every day. He has a good tolerance to it. That's what a pro bodybuilder is. Uh, that's one of the genetic traits of being a pro bodybuilder. How much drugs can you handle? before the side effects become so overwhelming that you can't increase the dose anymore. That's part of being a pro bodybuilder too, how resistant you are to side effects. It is a contest to see who can, who can put the most drugs into their body and stay alive. Um, and the people are going to say, well, I yeah, respect him for that because a guy got involved in a lifestyle that involves putting as much drugs into your body as you can and still surviving and then died from it. I've got to question what it is that you value in life and what it is you respect at that point. People will say, well, he died doing what he loves. Well, if someone loves playing Russian roulette, because that's what this is, and they die doing it, is it a tragedy? How do we even interpret that? Is this bodybuilding lifestyle any different from playing Russian roulette for uh, $300,000 to spend? Gamble, it's crapshoot. The wrong cylinder spun up on him. This is worthy of respect. This is worthy of having fans. We're going to prop this up and admire this in the online fitness world. It just killed this kid. And you know what? He died doing what he loves. He's 26 years old. He doesn't know what in the fuck he wants out of life. You know how many people in their mid-20s actually have their life figured out yet? A few... One in 10, one in 20, everyone here who's older knows what I'm talking about. If you're in your 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You didn't know what you wanted in your early 20s. You might have thought you knew. You didn't know. No, this guy killed himself. He got sucked into a lifestyle at a young age, 
in which he's now built his whole identity into it, got sucked into it because he went pro at 21 into a lifestyle that he didn't probably fully understand when he got sucked in. Now his whole identity got wrapped up into it. Couldn't change his mind if he wanted to. Using so many drugs that he passed out, almost died doing another show within the last year. Almost died then. And now he is dead. It killed him. He's dead. Rich Piana, well, you guys know what's going on there. I'm not going to say what I know at this point. I'm going to wait. I uh, hope none of you guys think Rich Piana is actually coming back. This lifestyle killed him. And you know what? A lot more of these guys are going to die soon because they've gotten crazy. They've gotten dangerous. They've gotten reckless. Everyone's like, oh, these guys are all genetic freaks. No, Ronnie Coleman was a genetic freak. That's why he's still alive. He's partially paralyzed. He's messed up, but he's still alive after all of this. Now, he set a standard that everyone else is trying to catch because he was a true genetic freak. You guys don't are genetic freaks. They just tolerate high doses of drugs. But you get a kid who had to go this hard to become the youngest pro, had to go this hard to become the youngest pro, and he died five years later. He's fucking dead. Oh, he had a big following. Yeah, his followers all see he's dead now. Rich Piana is dying. A whole bunch of these other guys are going to be dying within the next few years. Because they pushed it too far, and this whole lifestyle is unhealthy. Even the the getting ripped they do is unhealthy. It's not just about the drug abuse. There is the drug abuse, and there's a tr poly drug abuse, which I've tried to tell you guys. But even Jerry Ward has come out and talked about it. He's party with all the pros, and they all use street drugs and party drugs and everything else. It's part of the lifestyle. That's what's being celebrated. That's what's being promoted. The bodybuilding world is a death cult. It's a suicide cult. And here's the thing. Why are we saying rest in peace? I, I, I can't even say it this time. How am I going to say rest in peace when someone clearly got involved in a lifestyle they knew would kill them? All these guys know this shit's going to kill them. And they do it anyways. I guess they got their desired results. You can't pump seven different drugs, eight different drugs into your body at doses higher than have ever been used in a medical experiment in a human being. Eat absurd amounts of food, do crazy diets, do diuretics, do everything else, and expect to not die from it. And it's not just the long term. People are like, oh yeah, man, that's too bad. Rich Piana, man, made it 46. Well, this kid's 26. That's how fast this lifestyle can kill you. And you know what? I had a friend die at 27 in this lifestyle. He was only 250. I had a friend who dropped dead doing this stuff in his 20s. It's a death cult. It shouldn't have fans at all. If you're fans of this shit, you're worshiping death. We might as well just have gladiator matches where we can at least watch them hack each other apart in the arena. What's the difference? They're all killing themselves celebrating death. Why, why do you, these people have fans at all? Why do you people act like you admire what they're doing? Do you admire a heroin junkie who overdoses and dies? I guess if heroin gave you some muscles, you would, right? I'm done. I'm out. I'll talk to you guys next time.